Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Spark Your Fire. Uh, it's your host, David Shi here. And um, I'm, as always, I'm joined by Dave here as well from Perth. Uh, Dave, how are you, mate? Good. Loving it. Beautiful weather here in Perth today. So good. I don't want to work. <laughs> I can totally understand, mate. I can totally understand. And it's always good to have you back as well to give us a bit of insight on what uh, what's happening on the ground on, um, on Perth, especially... I think you're you're already seeing an influx of um, investors from Eastern Seaboard, and um, yeah. and uh, I know you you're always the one that uh, keeps saying there's no stock, there's no stock, and is that still the case at the moment on the ground, Dave? There is less than no stock. Um, than so no. if we break the market into four distinct sections, okay, we'll start with land. Land is not moving. So if we didn't get a new block of land to come to market. We've got about 22 to 25 weeks of land on market for sale. Mm -hmm. Land is dead, and it's dead because we're hearing horror stories from builders. People taking three years still don't have a roof on, some pretty shocking building practices. So um, locals are going, don't want to run that gauntlet. I'm going to go buy apartments. So apartments are really interesting. Um, if we were to go back 12 months ago, Days on market for an apartment could be up to a year. Um, really weren't shifting. They're now down to 60 days and particularly that low price point. So we've got some pretty unattractive 1960s, 1980s builds. Like I picked one up for my son recently for $180,000. It's rented for 400 a week. Couldn't say no. Um, so that bottom end is moving. But we're in a position where, you know, to build an apartment, so two beds, two baths, 90 square metres, including the balcony, that's 350000 That's not the car parks. That's not the land. That's not the lift. That's not the permits. So apartments are not coming out of the ground. Mm. There's a whole heap ready to go. They've got DA. They're designed. But we can't get maths to work. So they're not coming out of the ground. Then we're getting into duplexes, small townhouses, your villa in a block of two to five to 10. Yep. They've just started moving, particularly low end this point. Um, there's a whole, we'll, we'll touch on the rental market. There's a whole heap of people that can't get rentals. So let's just say they've been naughty tenants. Um, or they're people without a rental history. So speaking to property managers, they'll do an open home, they'll get 20 rental applications, and they'll put them into three piles. So the first one is, do you have a rental history? No, gone. Okay, you've got a rental history. That's great. Now, who's offering more than asking? Right, I'm going to pick up those offering more than asking. And what I'm going to do is I'll put them through a filter. Half of them will drop out. Mm -hmm. Right, now I'm down to three. Right, now I'm going to pick the best tenant out of those three. Um, so all those other tenants, the potential tenants, that they're not getting rentals. So they've gone to the bank of mum and dad, accessing some of the government grants, talking to brokers, and they're really buying that low-cost housing because it's their only option. But then we come to houses. So um, I think Sydney apartments are around 40% of sales. Yep. In Perth, apartments would be 7%. What? Land wouldn't be 2%. What people want to buy is houses. Oh, yeah. So stock on market for houses is a little over three weeks. So if it's listed first week and if it is... Under 800,000, if it is, let's call it a five out of 10 condition home or better, mm -hmm. there will be 80 to 100 people attending. So agents will generally do a Saturday, Sunday open, and they will get six to 16 offers. Um, first open, after first open. After the first open. So we were discussing once at this property in Spearwood. I really liked it for my client. So very original 1980s. New paint, new flooring, new rock solid, new paint, new flooring, new window treatments, new bathrooms, new kitchen. Big 4-2. 
It was a demolish and triplex site, very comfortable, very close to a proposed site for a coming railway station on the five-year horizon. Um, we were going to convert that to what we call an HMO or rent by the room. We would have had three micro apartments on it. So they're around $400 each a week. We would have had an ensuite master bedroom. That's 300 and then two rooms sharing a bathroom. They're 200 a week. So absolutely strong, strong rental income. Um, a year ago, that house was 550000 I know that agent really well. She's a lovely lady. Um, she wouldn't give me the exact price, but it was at 760 with nine offers and still going up. And uh, we were out, my client that exceeded my client's budget. So we had to tap out of that one. But it's just an example of how hot our market is. And you buy that house and you go, great, I'm going to need six 10 cubic meter skip bins to just deal with everything. So that one, um, going into aged care, you were buying everything with the house. Just think of that. So you want to buy this house, you're dealing with some pretty ordinary bright blue couch. They're going to take two pieces of furniture and their clothes, and that's part of the offer conditions. Right. And you've got nine offers with those, that condition. Um, and two of those were sight unseen cash. Jesus, <laughs> So housing here is, it, it is exploding. Um, another example, so what I'm really, on market now is just too competitive. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it, it, it's just insane. There's real strong fear of missing out. People are outbidding each other. So I'm putting a lot of effort into off market now and they're generally falling into one or two camps. So. A real very large camp is, um, yep, I want to sell, I want to upgrade, I want to downgrade, but I know I'm going to sell my house first week. Um, but I also know that um, I'm going to be homeless, so I'm not selling. So I'm spending half my life on the phone call, I'm identifying those sellers and we're doing one of two things. So you're the expert on the finance. So some banks will say three months from finance, you have to settle. Yep. Some will say six. So I'm doing one of these at the moment, ripping property in um, Sterling at a great price. Seller wants six months to find something. And we're going to go, that's good. And as a little backup, we're going to let you rent back from us at market rates. Mm. Um, after the six months, he wants to downsize. So that's one camp. The other camp is, let's be polite and call them problem properties. So um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, came to me off market. Um, husband and wife had gone through a very bitter divorce 10 years ago. Um, that was the last time the house was cleaned. So, so we did the building inspection last week. The building inspector kept picks up the remote fan to, to turn on the remote fan oh, man, this is disgusting. It's sticky and covered in oil. Um, so he had um, basically got himself a new girlfriend. He didn't want the wife to know he was selling the home. There's obviously a lot of animosity between them, and I, I've got a feeling he still owes her money. Mm -hmm. So it was just a very quiet, off-market sale, nothing on, no signage, nothing on the front. We bought it. We paid 620000 my client is going to undertake um, a monster clean. So I've actually got an OCD cleaner. There, She's just amazing. She will be there for a week. We're ripping out all the flooring. It's a repaint. It's um, putting a screen in the bathroom, regrouting one of the showers because it's leaking. Mm. That property will value up at $750. they are going to work very hard for two weeks. But at 100000 for two weeks, I think most of us are pretty keen to take on Absolutely. that sort of work. So that's the other side of what I'm really looking for because now on market is just too competitive. Mm, mm. Um, I'm just an uh, example. Um, suburb called Heathridge, I've really, really liked it. It's been traditionally a first-time owner suburb close to the university, close to the freeway, it's close to a train station, close to the, the really, really nice beach. 
Now, a year ago, I'd buy a nice 4.2 there. Actually, I bought one that was trashed. We paid 450 for it. Um, my client has just had a bank valuation done, 720. 720 within 12 Seven, months. You know, they've renovated it and this house was trashed. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. But, you know, they put 80 into it. So maths are really, really good. And they've done a retain and build on that. So just the house, we've mm. still got the block at the back, came in at 720 this week. So we are screaming. So I'm going to put my looking forward to the future hat. We've got, it's so like a lot of Australia has struggle with supply it's struggle with supply struggle with rental and so november 20 sorry august 2021 to august 2022 66,000 migrants to western australia for those 66,000 migrants we built one house for every four families this year um august to august it was just under 80,000 people migrated to the state and for every person that arrived, we built five. Uh, for every five house, every five families, we built one home. Mm. This year, we're not going to build eight thousand homes. Last year, we did about fourteen because the land is not selling. People don't want to build. So, Perth is like it or not a mining, oil, and gas economy. It is around fifty percent with the associated industries that stack up behind it. So we've got um, the Scarborough project is going ahead, although it has just hit a very big lump um, this week with um, a permit being a very crucial environmental permit being denied after a court case. That will be resolved. This is just too much money at stake. That is 22 billion US. But speaking to clients who work for Woodside, they all know it's going to be substantially more than that. Herdeman is doing a urea plant, so the world has a chronic shortage of nitrogen-based fertilisers because China stopped exporting it. That's six and a half billion. Woodside have just announced a 500 megawatt solar plant is going to go ahead in Karatha. And there's going to be an announcement, if my source is right, of a substantial hydrogen plant in the Pilbara as well. That is two weeks away. Now, the amount I've heard not verified, is $44 billion. Oh. That is a lot of money. Big project. Um, sure. If we put all of those together, we're looking at around, say, $70 billion Australian dollars in work that's yet to start. Mm. Perth is full. So when I look at the amount of people that have got to come in to make that, we, we have a chronic because our building downturn was 10 years, we're seeing two builders a week still go bankrupt. We just have a total lack of capacity to add stock. And I know that's everywhere across Australia, but it is exponentially worse at the moment in Perth. So we factor that. We factor this work. And it's, so the Scarborough project's already started. Um, that, that was August last year. The camp was being built. They're doing several works at the moment. Mechanical won't be far behind. Mm. But where are we going to put these people? Um, we're seeing in the rental market used to be one, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend in a house. Now they're co-sharing. I'm a really big fan of the rent by the rooms. They rent even faster than a traditional rental. Now, for example, um, I purchased a property in Kareen, beautiful suburb. Um, it's famous for a really nice park, great cafes, um, close to the beach, close to the freeway, reasonably close to the city. Um, that open home had 100 people in it. Um, the agent literally got to the door. She said, sorry, you're going to have to wait. There's just too many people in the house. Um, picked that one up because we did a very strong cash, no can or light condition offer. Yep. Um, we're going to rent that for eleven hundred a week. And it's a four, two bath house. Okay. Without a um, with not on suited, with a one bed one bath granny flat. Okay. Um, and the interest in that has just blown my mind. Um, and it's just yeah, I really feel for tenants, particularly tenants without rental history. 
we just you can't get a home and that's you know good people sleeping in cars um so we're seeing a real compression now you know childless couples are now starting to live together when i look at with flatline so for the last um year rental stock has been around 1600 that it's structurally as low as we can go just because of people coming going yep. leaving but when we look our traditional migration period is january february that is when the half of that call it 80,000 people last year arrived in those two months there is nothing to buy there is nothing to rent you've really, really got to move before then because the explosion that i'm expecting to see is just yeah it, it's going to be huge um agents are loving it on the leasing side because they know provided the seller is reasonable mm -hmm. They know it's gone first week. They know they can have a, they're basically only doing sort of two or three houses a week because that's thanks to the offers and the inquiry. That's all they can cope with. Yeah. But they know it's gone. Wow. Um, and yes, yeah, some people are getting really emotive because they're missing out um, because, you know, they need a house, they need a property, they need a place to live. And yeah, just some of the knockout offers are flooring me. This, uh, this feels exactly like the feel of missing out that we've seen around in Sydney as well, where, you know, a lot of people who's not willing to sell as well because they can't find anything that they're willing to do. To, to yeah. That's the main thing. They, they know exactly like what you said. If they sell a house, they're going to be homeless next minute and because they can't find something or even if they can't they find can't it. Even, yeah. can't even go into a rental. And then the thing is they're going, okay, I've got to, I've got to and an agent explain it to me really. I said, David, when I'm selling a house, you know, with a six, eight week settlement, the buyer hates me because I've really got top dollar and the seller loves me. By the time I've settled, prices have already moved. The buyer loves me and the seller hates me. Exactly. <laughs> so I think we're at that stage in the market where Brisbane was um, two years ago, where we just they had that exponential, that rapid jump. Yeah. We're doing that at the moment. So Median house price in Perth is around 620630 I think we're very rapidly going to reach that 750 mark before affordability really starts sort of kicking in and knocking people out. You know, a year ago, actually even one reasonably, 450 got a really good off-market deal, bit of a disgusting home, needed a clean paint and carpets. Can't do that today, and that's been four months. Wow. I, I you know, I, I can't find that property today. Yeah. Um, Dave, have we um have 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 Perth reached its previous peak so far? Has it recovered from yes. the previous peak? Yeah, yeah. It, it's seen... so. Yeah, so we're we're now in front of 2012 when we peaked. Mm -hmm. It sounds bizarre because we're the only country, place in the country that can say that. <laughs> but when we look at 2012, your interest rate was eight and a half to nine percent. Yep. You know, investment debt's around the 6%, depending on your circumstances. Over that time, we've had 30% inflation and we've had 30% more wages growth. Mm -hmm. Particularly if you've got a trade at the moment, you just name your price, we'll pay it. Um, and, yeah, we are, you know, particularly government employees, government is really now struggling to recruit because I'll pick an example. So... We do, I do a lot of subdivisions for clients. It's something we like. So Western Power, it was part of getting a subdivision, have to approve the subdivision. Um, and they have to do engineering to make sure that, you know, we're going to add another load. That particular system transformer supply will meet. Uh, about at the start of the year, they lost around 70 to 80% of their engineers because the government said, no, 3% pay rise for you. And they said, well, look, Private industry is 30%, 40% more. See you later. We'll see you later. So now we're seeing delays of up to two and a half years, particularly for, so if you're doing, um, I've got my eye on a site that's a nine-lot subdivision, but I've had to tell my client, it's going to be two and a half years before we can get power here. Mm, okay. That is a substantial holding cost because without electricity, like we've got a single supply, look, that'll be enough to build it but it's not going to be enough to energize it. Um, 
Mm. You know, so I've got to tell my client on the feasibility, allow two and a half years to get your power on. Because by the time it gets engineering, if they have to upgrade, transformer, that's what we've got to put into the numbers. Mm. Now, the good thing is that two and a half years, the sale price is going to be a lot more, but it's a lot of money sitting there parked. Um, yeah. yeah. Jeez. So we've just got we've got all this demand, but we've got all these constraints. So there's only one thing that can give, and that's pricing. Yeah, which is already being reflected as well at the moment. Um, essentially, it's uh, given how much competition there is and how little stock that's available. Yeah. Um, and I know this. And it's when, houses. Yeah, when you were it's talking houses, houses. Yeah, 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 exactly houses. I think houses are the main thing. You know this uh, when you when you when you were when you were basically sharing what you're seeing on the ground. It, every time it gave me the feeling of deja vu all the time. Every time, every time it's we speak, game. it's 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 always the same theme. Um, unfortunately, and I and yeah, like you know, I think last time we also had the same conversation. Not sure there's much ways that we can work around it at the moment, but actually, just out of curiosity as well, Dave. Um, I've got a lot of clients around the 500, 600k budget at the moment. Within Perth, can you still get something within that price range with about 20 kilometers from CBD? Um, it's, you're, at that price range, you're into a unit of, unit. say, two or three beds in a lot of six to eight. Or a strategy I really love is buying two bed, three bed, one bath duplex halves. Mm -hmm. That is something called. So, um, one I purchased for a client recently, it was an off market transaction. Uh, just needed to be a very quick sale. Seller had bought something. They didn't want to lose it. Agent rang me, paid fair market for it. Uh, three beds, one bath, right by a primary school. Nice home, new kitchen, new bathroom. And it was something called built strata, which means you own everything inside the walls of the house. Mm -hmm. Everything outside is common property. So you can walk stark naked into your neighbor's backyard because you own it together and they can return the favor. So there's a firewall in place. It just needs to be extended. So we're going to convert that to something called green title. So two separate properties. Mm. And that will release around fifty to 80000 in equity. Okay. Okay. Just because the built strata values less. And later on, my client, we're going to demolish that and build a really nice four-bed, two-bath, two-story home. Right. That will basically set her up. Mm. Um, so that's... That's sort of 520, that's sort of where that is starting at at the moment. But once again, because it's at that bottom of that affordability scale, the demand is through the roof. Yep. It's competition. It's just, yeah, I just can't get a rental. I'm sick of this. And yeah, that, that's what you have to do to get a house at the moment um, at that low end. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's fraught, but so even I'm just picking on one in Heathrow. So a year ago, I would buy a really nice four bed, two bar, five eighty in Heathrow. There was a sale this week, um, very nice. Call it eight and out of ten. It was an off market transaction because the buyer had just had enough, yep. and the agent knew the buyer had had enough and said seven ninety. This is yours. Otherwise, it goes on market. The buyer paid seven ninety for a house that a year ago was five eighty to six twenty. Wow, it's a complete seller's market, basically. Um, that's, uh, that's it, it, it's, yeah. it's a very strong seller's market, but sellers are always buyers unless they're deceased, and that's the problem. So it, it's yeah, and it's just we are so as you're saying with Sydney, we're just so log jammed. People aren't trading; they they just they don't want to. They they're scared of being homeless, and that's sort of where I'm sleeping in under the radar. Mm. Yep, we're just going to give you a long settlement. You find what you want. Give us two weeks' notice, and we're ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, okay. So we're seeing, and I think this has been on, going on for a while, we're seeing both price and rents shooting up, increasing at the same time. Um, are mm -hmm. you seeing the prices rising a lot faster than the rents at the moment? Um, like, yes. I guess, yeah, I'm asking yeah. that question because just from an investor's yield perspective, we know traditionally we're probably able to get around a 5% or even a 6% depending on where you buy. Is that still the case right now? 
So yields are dropping because prices are rising. Faster, yeah. And we're hitting affordability limits for mm. tenants. So if we say maximum a third of income, so house prices have done this, wages have done this. And tenant quality is so important. When you've got a great tenant, it's I will always look at tenant quality over price because it's just headaches. Um, so we're now seeing... Um, that basically we're hitting, you know, if you're a teacher, a nurse, a doctor, you're now tapped on affordability. Um, so we're starting to see rental growth slow. Mm. Uh, it's still going on. I can see 10% this year quite comfortably. And I think for housing, we'll see 15. Wow. Yeah. Um, but we are hitting that affordability limit yep. of where we can go. I think we, we're going to see a very strong surge in construction over the next three to four years. That is going to see some people on construction wages, which are higher with more affordability. But we also need to look after our doctors, our nurses, our policemen that we're desperate to get over here. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're really going to, we, we are starting to hit that affordability for families. Mm. And what they are now doing is it's two families together. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, two families renting together. Is that right? Paying together. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's going to be it. So those larger homes, uh, they're starting to be more popular. That's because how they can get affordability. Yeah. Um, or, the, you know, they're going to, you know, family, they're going to lease to a mate for an extra bedroom to help pay the rent and to help pay the bills. Yeah. But we are started to hit affordability limits um what about you, know, you think um, of people hmm, yeah. okay. so you, you think of people on benefits um injury oh, you just feel for them there's there is no housing for them mm, mm, mm. what about um people purchasing together so having multiple families under one roof um and and i'm not talking Haven't about HMO at the them. moment i'm talking about standard houses yeah. just um yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen a brother sister do it. Okay. Okay. Um, just to get out of home. Haven't seen that occurring yet. Okay. But as prices, because we're still cheap. We we're the cheapest capital city in Australia. We're still comparatively cheap. So I think that'll start coming not next year, but the year after, as prices really continue as just as a means of getting in mm -hmm. uh, into the market. Yeah, I think it's inevitable, unfortunately. I mean, you know, um, the way that Sydney is priced right now, I think a lot of families can only afford when they're combining forces. And, you know, property is going to become a, a richer's game. As I always say, you know, it's um, those people who um, who uh, who can control those assets um, and it's going to be multiple yeah. families buying into one home and be able to share and cohere. So, which then raises, I know you've um, you're trying to solve this affordability issue with uh, <laughs> on behalf of the state government as well, um, and you'll be buying a lot of um, sites with HMO uh, conversion capabilities. Yeah. Can you explain yeah. to us a little bit about what you're doing there? Yeah, so basically the, the minimum, so not maybe five to six percent of listings will meet what we need to get an HMO to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the baseline is we'll buy a four bed, two bath home with two lounges. Mm -hmm. We'll convert the front lounge to what we call a micro apartment, which is an ensuite, a wet kitchenette, a wardrobe, a bed, two bedside tables, a TV, a couch, and a table um, with a couple of chairs. We will lease that first week for somewhere between $400 to $420 a week. Mm -hmm. We will then lease the ensuite bedroom for $300 to $340 a week. And it's all very size dependent. Yep. And then the minor bedrooms at the back um, will be around $180 to $250, depending on size. Um, we will get first open home, we'll have 80 to 100 couples through. We'll get 30, maybe 35 rental applications. And we will very quickly get that down to three to four. So tenant fit, it's it's the art in running an HMO is getting the right tenants together. Mm. Okay. Um, we will then do another open home or at least two, and then we might have to do a third to get one. Um, I missed out on when we were talking about it off mic, this property in Spearwood. So 
very original 1980s yeah, the agent's selling it with all the clutter we'll convert that to three micro apartments an ensuite and bedroom and a um, two um, sharing rooms that conversion my clients are going to do the bulk of it themselves will cost them 120 to 140 thousand but we would exceed more than two thousand dollars a week rent mm, wow um the property was listed at from 650 to 725 when i spoke to the agent yesterday she's got 770 and rising just an example we've had to step away from that one because it exceeds budget yes but that's the sort of thing I like. So you would say, let's say your rental returns 5%. Let's say your holding costs are 3%. That's 8%. We, going back to two years ago, everything I was buying was positively geared thanks to the interest rate. Now for clients to just, we get the right property, the right location. So that one in Speed was also a demolition triplex site. So we've just got that underlying value for 20 years out from now. Um, but those are the things that are really getting me excited. It's just positively geared, strong rental return, and the demand is through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, particularly, we, we get a lot of people, this is their entry into the rental market. They're, they're good tenants. They're great people. They're all desperate. We provide them a house. They'll do 12 months, and then they'll get their partner, and they'll go get a more traditional rental. They're yep. just looking for that rental history to to get onto yeah, the queue getting first isn't it to yeah to even get that first to even get a pass in that first filter basically yeah and it's so hard you know what what do you do like i've got a lovely client and one of mine he's um from um bhutan came over just before covid covid hit he lost his job he got a new job um he was finally able through all the visa kerfuffle to bring his family over no one would rent to him i had to pull some strings to get him and his family and beautiful guy really nice family's fantastic making good money but because his wife didn't have a job because they didn't have a place to live they weren't qualified yeah, yeah. once they've got a place to live she could get a job but she doesn't drive and yeah you know great people can't get homes and it's it's not fair and i just don't we're five years from getting demand and supply back to balance and, you know, we talked about that one hydrogen plant um, that is looking like it's two, three weeks away from an announcement. There's three more proposed. So I, I'm just looking at it now and just seeing an absolute explosion about to occur off the back of just a lack of houses. And, you know, we go back to 2010, 2012, we had a two-speed economy. So if you're in the construction mining game, jet skis for everyone. Yep. If you're... A more traditional employer you were were struggling and i think we're we're heading back to that market heading back that isn't it yeah yeah it's a bit of a shame um just circling back to yeah. the hmo can you just give us a i guess for the for the benefit of our listeners give us some numbers um so for example a, a purchase cost that you've done uh in terms of how much how much do you need to be able to do that conversion um you know and the time mm -hmm. frame and what sort of return would you be looking at yeah, okay. Well, I'll give an address to people that can Google. One Pomodoro Place, South Lake. So, very unusual. It was built by a family that was half Chinese, half Indonesian. Mm -hmm. And in both of those cultures, intergenerational living is strong. So, it was built specifically for mum and dad to stay in one of the ensuite rooms, grandma, granddad to stay in another, and then the kids got two minor, um, got two rooms mm. um they've moved over to indonesia for business um and we purchased this november last year um i wouldn't get this price for it again it wasn't selling because people were looking at it going kids are going to fight over who gets the ensuite room too hard <laughs> paid five hundred and fifty-five thousand for that okay and because it had two really big lounges We've converted the front lounge to a micro apartment. Uh -huh. We've chopped the back lounge in half, and it's still huge. Converted that to a micro apartment. Okay. We have two large ensuite bedrooms, two 90 square meter bedrooms, and we're getting 1880 a week for that. 1880. My client, yeah, my client is a plumber. Um, so his cost is not everyone else's cost. That would have been about 140000 to pay for it. 
he, through that whole black economy that's common in that industry, he spent probably about 30. Okay. And that property is actually, we're going to leverage two policies. One's called the single person dwelling exemption. And one is called the corner lots policy, WAPC 2.2. Oh. So it's got a very large 60 square meter shed on. And we're going to convert that to a one bed, one bath study, which is a bedroom without a door. We're in the process now of subdividing that off. Um, that will read for around 500 a week on the HMO model. So we're paying the bills. And that subdivision, by the time we're all done, my client will have 30,000 of his own money in that. And we'll be getting around two, three a week in rent. Wow. I've okay. a pretty good deal. So the main dwelling, what you're saying basically is uh five, let's say five uh around five fifty K purchase cost last year. Yeah. Um and yeah. assuming it wasn't that a would, that one would be six fifty today. That was November, so that would be six fifty today. Okay, yeah. so that's you six fifty in that case. So six fifty K, that's a say, for example, someone purchased something similar. They're going to have to chuck in, say, 130k to be able to do this conversion. What what sort of time frame? I'm assuming it needs DA approval because it's a boarding house type of setup. That, that's correct. So there's a, we have to do some fire compliance, mm -hmm. which is every bedroom gets a smoke alarm that's interwired. Every bedroom gets emergency lighting. Mm -hmm. There is emergency lighting in the hallway. So when the smoke alarm goes off, all the lights come on. Every house gets a smoke um, fire blanket, fire extinguisher, and evacuation plans. Yeah. That's the compliance. In addition to that, we furnish. So we'll put in, um, we're trying to get king singles and queen beds just yep. as a standard. Yep. We'll put in um, some wardrobes, some bedside tables, bedside lights. We will give to you um, a duvet. We'll give to you a fitted quality um, mattress protector, pillows, you bring your own linen. Uh -huh. And in the micro apartments, we'll put couches, TVs, chairs, tables, we've put um, crockery, knives, forks, spoons, plates, yep. fridges, washing machines, et cetera. Um, but in particular, the demand is, is just mind blowing. Uh -huh. um, we generally, I'm a big fan of allowing pets in properties. I don't know, to me, it's always kids that destroy homes. It's never dog, never animals. We, we can't discriminate against children. So in there, we will pick a tenant that has, so we will check the, generally it's a dog. The dog has to be highly sociable. So we'll check them for that. And what we've found is that actually acts as a draw card um, because we're selecting the right tenants. They're pet friendly. Everyone loves the dog. Dog goes from place to place, someone's away. It mm. just brings in that we're trying to get a culture in the home. So one of the ones my client's doing, um, that's basically they've always, it's nurses. And as a nurse has left it, they've brought in another nurse. So you go there Christmas Eve, they're having a Christmas party. The place is decorated. Someone's on roast duty every night. So there's five um, tenants in that one. Mm -hmm. So every fifth week, it's Sunday night's roast night. They all gather around, have roast. The culture in the house is really what we've got to promote to get it to right. Yeah, right. Um, but particularly this market and the market that we're moving into, um, the demand is insatiable. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Dave, I wasn't sure whether you answered my previous question, which is the time frame in terms of getting that compliance. So um, that's going to be months. Conversion. Sorry, six to eight weeks. For the six to eight weeks to do the conversion. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you need to get so approval from just, the council um, before you do that? that? That's right. So we will lodge the approval whilst we are settling. So it's a okay. condition we put into the offer. Okay. So that we settle. Trades are a problem now. They're going to be more of a problem moving into the future. So I've got one contractor who does great work. Mm -hmm. um, we generally the trades are booked. We allow sort of three to four days from settlement, particularly where we've got a stack of properties yep. because there's a lot of people transacting all at once. Um, we have a guy, um, he comes in, he's complete, uh, he's Brazilian, he's a complete nut case. He will strip out whole house in a day. So once the designers, you know, flooring goes, you might have to get rid of some ugly bathrooms, update a kitchen, and then from there we're straight into it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but okay. six to eight weeks is a typical. 
Um, as soon as it's complete, we then take photos. Well, we move the furniture in, we then take photos. Um, we will do um, a weekend, Saturday, Sunday open. We will do a Wednesday open, maybe chuck in another one. So within a week, we've done all our opens and we will have probably 60 applications for those five to six rooms. And then we just tenant quality, tenant quality, sit there, take the time, talk to them, make sure that they're the culture and the mindset that we want and we'll bring on board and we never take a bad. If we have a doubt, taking that tenant, that you go, it's a really good indicator. And you have multiple leases, I'm assuming, for each of That's the right. Rooms. Yeah. So um, it's covered under the borders. So we have in Western Australia the Residential Tenancies Act. This actually sits under the borders and lodges regulations. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so when we read the definitions, we're a border and we're a lodger. So whilst we still put on a compliant Residential Tenancies Act lease and we pay a bond, um, we have additional things that actually are the benefit to the landlord in terms of, so in Western Australia, to break lease, depending on where you are, you know, you've got a tenant that doesn't pay, it could be three to four months before you're in court. We don't have to worry about that. We only have to give reasonable notice, which depending on the tenant behaviour is a week to two weeks. Thank oh. you very much, you're gone. Wow. We okay. change the comp. So every door has a combination lock. We changed the combination. It's pretty unpleasant. We've only had to do it once so far because we've put all that effort in up front mm. um, and off you go. Yeah, right. Okay. And if you have multiple leases, does that mean it's harder to property manage from that perspective? And is that Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So the property manager will charge more mm -hmm. because I personally don't want to be dealing with, look, the tenant in room four used my butter. <laughs> I have other problems in my life so they charge more because it is more work yes. so a property management company that is doing property management well which sadly is not many will generally cap a property manager at 100 managements and then they'll have an offshore assistant doing leases bond lodgements, that sort of thing yep. in um, hmos we're generally going to cap you at 25 to 30 properties and you're full and that's you doing the job well not being overloaded looking after tenants looking after landlords attending to repair some maintenance because there's more people it is more intensive work that needs to be done that's right but yeah it it, it just it, it works and I'm, I'm looking forward and going with the work that's coming in the mining and oil and gas sector it, it's a no-brainer mm. And what sort of property management fees would they be charging in comparison to standard? I think so standard my computer is charging 15% plus GST. Okay. We're doing 13% and I think we're doing a better job. Yep. That's my personal opinion. Um, but the rent reflects that. So it's, you know, simple little things like the property managers paying the water, the gas, bill, not just the rates and the insurance. Sure. They're frequently visiting the property more. We're, you know, the landlord pays for power, so we always put a 6.6 .6 kilowatt. If we've got a three-phase supply, we'll put a 10 kilowatt solar system. Mm -hmm. Your payback is 18 months. You know, there's gardening, and they're there more often just checking up, making sure things are right, and dealing with those issues that come up when you've got that many people living together. Yeah, yeah. What about, um, um, I guess, wear and tear around the properties, as you said, because people move in, in, in and out in that kind of scenario. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming, you know, the wear and tear would be, I guess, more than a standard yep. ordinary house. Um, so yep. the owners would also be need to be prepared that they would need to have more budget, a higher budget in terms of the wear and tear whenever there's a turnover. Yeah. Particularly because we're paying for the fridge. So we'll generally put two fridges in a home. We're providing the washing machine. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you've got, say, six people living. Your washing machine is going to be working hard. Basically. Um, we we'll do an incoming uh, property condition report. So if a tenant leaves and, you know, fair wear and tear, we'll just quickly paint a bedroom. Okay. It doesn't take it's a day. Mm -hmm. it, it's in, it's out. We've got um, a particular flooring that we use. It's a click-clack plastic back vinyl plank that is bulletproof if the flooring's damaged we'll always keep six to eight square meters we put it in the ceiling void 
yep, look, she spilled nail polish. We'll charge the tenant to replace that, grab it out, bam, bam, bam. Done. Done. Replace the skirting. We're good. We've, it's taken, it's a real art and a science. It's taken us a long time to get to the point where we're very comfortable with it and have got the bugs out of the system. Yep. It's a simple little thing like car parking. You've really, you look at a house go, beautiful, not enough car parks. <laughs> Gone. So it, it, it really is. So like this one that we're doing in Belmont is very close to the airport. So one of the things is because we've all got very large ensuite bedrooms, yep. we're going to target three FIFO workers and we're all gonna we're gonna look for people on two and one shifts, so two weeks on, one week off, and we're going to stagger them. Okay, wow. So that reduces wear and tear. We've got tenants we know who can afford it. Yes. But there's just less people living in the house. True. Yes. So, you know, it's those things that we're doing. And FIFO workers are going to love this property because of what we're going to deliver. Um, and it, it's just absolutely perfect. Mm, mm. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, look, thanks, Dave, in terms of the having the crush course for the uh, for the for the HMO. Um, yeah, just before we wrap up as well, are there, I guess, are there anything else that um, apart from the obviously excellent yield and, you know, a bit of initial outlay in order to convert them and anything else in regards to the HMO that uh, I guess our listeners should be aware of? Any other um, features, any other quality features? house, quality location. So like I'm seeing people doing them and um, let's pick on a suburb. I really hate Armadale. So low socioeconomic, buying at less than replacement value, which on the surface looks really attractive. Mm -hmm. But your social demographic is wrong. The culture in the house is wrong. Your poor property manager is going to be working hard, constantly dealing with problems because the demographics are wrong. Yep. It's just, you know, so quality house, quality location. We're very cognizant of when we're doing the conversions that um, we need to be able to potentially, at the peak of the market, just move them out and just convert them back similar to what they were. We've got all that in mind when we're doing it. But the thing that gives me hope, I, I don't see this market calling for five years. I see the present conditions continuing because we just can't add stock for five years. So we, in five years, you've got a four by two that's getting 650 a week. I've got a six by five that's getting 2,000 a week. What's an investor going to pay more for? Mm, mm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Especially when um, yeah. investors are chasing yield in the current environment, right? I um, mean, you know, you're looking at yeah. a, a, a resi a resi yield like this. Um, definitely makes sense from when you are uh, when you pay all the outgoings and still have extra money back in your pocket by the end of the day. So, yeah, it, it's what's the saying? Capital growth gets you out, mm. yield keeps you in. Mm. Mm. Um, and, you know, going back to three years ago, I bought a little house for a sub, um, right by the airport in a suburb called Redcliffe. Um, agent couldn't count bedrooms. He advertised it as a 3-2, but it was a 4-2. Um, I picked it up for a ridiculous $370,000. <laughs> My client's money was 2%. Um, and it was lived in by three South African brothers who were filthy pigs. Um, they're all in the mining. They were there principally because they could go to the walk to the airport, walk home. And we said to them, guys, it's like this. You're filthy pigs. You can either leave or your rent's 580 a week. What do you want to do? And mm. one of them said, mate, I spend 50 bucks a day on cigarettes. Done. And that's now getting 650 a week. Jeez, wow. um, you know, that was two years ago. But if we put that house on market today, that's 550. Mm, mm. You know, I just can't get that that yield. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what that's what always struggling with um traditionally with the um with houses basically. And but even yeah. even on that note, I mean, you know, looking across Australia, I don't know about Darwin, but uh, you know, Perth certainly is uh certainly where where I guess uh investors can still get relatively decent yield. Mm -hmm. Um, but it may not be for oh, long. Gosh. <laughs> Locals are sitting. It's really interesting. My inquiry is Eastern states, yes. Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. Yep. Perth investors are still asleep. <laughs> it's blowing my mind. They are still having a little snore on the sidelines. 
<laughs> when when all that a hundred people going through open inspections are all eastern seaboard investors or local buyers but local investors are still like well what's going yeah. on you know take it easy yeah 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 and look, i think a lot of that is fair going back to 2012 and yeah. you know we're, we're just we're just back to that point we're now just getting that equity back and yeah. I think they're just waiting to see a bit more equity in that they're a year or two away. Yeah. Um, particularly once they see some of this construction starting and they'll be in, yeah. I suspect because they've been burned back in 2012 and, you know, it's been 10 years of literally no growth, so they want to be a lot more cautious in the current environment as well. And, and, and they are. So I go back three years ago, I spent $14 million in Port Hedland and Caratha and South Hedland. Mm buying homes um it was very obvious that the market was turning rapidly um and you know i example we paid three hundred and seventeen thousand for for a house that last sold for 1.35 million oh. funny enough there's a bank at the end of that we leased it for 750 dollars a week my client held that for 18 months and sold it for 626 30. Um, and I could not get people in Perth when I was explaining to them, it's below replacement value, there's no stock, here are the trends, West Australians wouldn't invest because they got burnt, Sydney, Melbourne, ha, ha, where do I sign? <laughs> you know? oh. And so they've done really well, but the people in Perth will jump in if I'm right with what's about to happen, they're yeah. 18 months, two years away, yeah. and that will just be more steam. That's right. That's right. I don't even know what the yeah what the purchase price would be at that point in time, you know. But it certainly wouldn't be as attractive as what they see. And when they look back, they'll be like, "Well, I should have made a move a lot earlier." But um, anyway, yeah. it is what it is. So it, it, it is what it is. But I'd, I'd say in particular, and you're seeing it in the market here. So I'll go back to one two weeks ago. Um, so Perth buyers are shy, conservative people from the eastern states know how to play. So property I really liked in Forest Field, so it was retain and build triplex. Keep mm -hmm. the house, put one either side, do an HMO with the middle house. Know the agent very well. I've actually bought one of my own collection off him and I've got a very good relationship with him and his son. Um, he goes to me, David, yep, yep, we're going to wrap this one up on Tuesday. Fantastic, give me a bit of time. Rings me, David, I've received a knockout cash offer expires 8 p.m. tonight on Saturday. Um, well, he gave me a hint as to where we needed to be, and it's like, hey, take that offer, we're, we're done. So, and that was an Eastern States buyer, saw the same potential, I'll grab that, 8 p.m., and the offer was so good, the agent went, can't ignore that. That is 80,000 more than asking. Mm. We're going to take that. No conditions. And, you know, this house had issues. You wobble the front fence, yeah, that was it's brick feds and it's wobbling. Oh, wow. it was, yeah, there, there were issues with the property, but they played hard. They, they know how to play the game. Whereas Perth, yeah, <laughs> can't be picky in a field missing our market. I think in the, in the eastern investors all know that very well by looking at our local markets, right? Especially Sydney, Melbourne, yeah. and Brisbane. So. Anyway, it was good chatting yeah. with you, Dave. And um, look, as always, you know, thank you for jumping on. Um, just uh, if anyone's interested, how do they reach out to you, Dave? Just Google Buyers Agency Co Perth. I'll pop up or just give us a ring on 0493-405-084. Lovely. Well, thanks very much, Dave. And uh, look, we for look forward to thanks, our back on again. Okay. Beautiful. Have a great day. You too, mate. See ya.